<laughs> the minute when the puppies exchange hands is the minute when life as we know it ceases to change forever. I feel a little nervous. A little? A little bit, but I'm but I'm happy Which though. To... That's the name of your puppy, Sky. Yeah, right? her name is Sky. Sky's the limit, huh? Yes. I'm so happy, man. Yo, congratulations, to y'all. Congratulations, yeah, congratulations, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Hey guys. Look at that. Hey, look at that. Wow. Hey, little puppy. Hey, little puppy. Hey, little puppy. Hey, little puppy. Hey, You watch? Yeah. Yeah, there's okay. okay. There you go, dude. Mm -hmm. She feel like two pounds. <laughs> Bye -bye, I gotta take it. Hey, Zeal. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> hey, puppy. I'm extremely Hi, puppy. nervous, more nervous than excited. Uh, prior to my incarceration, when I was 15 years old, I was involved in the street life and, and gang activity from selling drugs to selling guns. That was my life. Hello, puppy. Hello, puppy. Mm. That puppy smell. Got kids? Remember when the baby smell? The day that my crime occurred, it was a street beef. I felt threatened and ultimately just pulled out a gun and just shot a, just shot a, a kid that I happened to have gone to school with his sister. I really hate the person who I was then. Well, I was a horrible person. It was really senseless when I look back at it. I was 19, and I'm 33 now. I'm looking for forgiveness. This puppy, this is gonna be my second chance. That's just how I see it, it's a second chance for me to do something right. I never really raised anything. Like, I never got to raise my children. 
Never got, I seen him born. I seen my oldest son born. Didn't get to see a sister. I seen my, my baby girl, I seen her born. For them, they're like, yeah, we'll see when you come home that when you say something, you're gonna do it. Because they, don't, they really don't know who I am. I just pray that I will be able to, to give her to a war vet. I wanna be an example, not just for me, but for my children, my grandson. I wanna to prove to myself, I have to prove this to myself, that, I, that I'm gonna do this. doesn't know where that light is by now. We got a problem bigger than nightmares. Well, I, just like I know, but Joey, the light hasn't moved, right? She knows where the light is. After she does the light, still thrash for a couple of seconds. And even right. after she comes back to you, just for a couple of seconds, even after the lights turn on. No! 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 No, that's that you, yes. you missed the yes, Joey. So you've got to say yes while you're snoring and while you're thrashing. I'm not saying it's easy, but you've got to do all of that because you're training her, okay? All right, let's give her a break now because she's done it three times. So it looks, she's getting there, but it's more you. She's easier to train than you, all right? Oh, light, Scooby, light. Ah, I get off food, no light. Scooby light. <laughs> he took off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good boy, Scooby. He's too precocious. So really make it like you're having a nightmare. Because if you just thrash normally, you don't want a dog to turn on the light all the time or it's going to piss you off. So you have to just be a little more. OK, but he looks good. Light. Just literally seeing all the pictures of the bombings in Iraq and Afghanistan day after day after day, I just said, I want to do something. I haven't done it with Oprah. This will be the first time. And what I could do was through raising PTSD dogs. Dogs in particular can be a conduit for somebody to share emotion, talk to, to just heal. Just in case somebody's having a nightmare, they won't not hit the door. Right. Do you think you can start teaching her that instead of coming? Okay. okay. It's really, really great, BJ. I really believe in second chances. I believe people can change. As you get to know him, you want him to watch you before They've proved they can do wrong. They've proved that they can wrong and they have wronged society. Let them prove they can do something right. Let them prove they can contribute to society. Watch me. Yes. Yes, good boy, lucky baby. That's the way to go. I have to be tough because we're working with a tough population. We are not working with a bunch of nuns or a bunch of grandmothers. Let's go. I feel Fetha was like, she was meant for me because Fetha's birthday is my daughter's birthday. That's a good girl here. That's a good girl here. I, I look at her and I said, look. I said, I got you these treats. And then all of a sudden, I just said, you see Steffi? Because I used to call my daughter, her name is Stephanie. And it just brought me back to, um, to that moment that when I was in the street, which was a long time ago. When I was 16, I started selling cocaine. 
My son, he was 17 months old when I got arrested. My daughter was nine months old when I got arrested. I don't really look at myself right now as a, as a parent. I messed up before, but now I'm not gonna mess up. I can't just step in and act like, listen, you know, they have to trust me. You know, I have to just show them the love that I have in me. Prison in general, you stick to yourself. But the inmates have to work together as part of a group, and this is really unusual in prison. All of those guys need to acquire people skills as well as dog skills. We're offering the means to do so, but they've got to step up to the bat. So get it? Oh, give? Yes, good. Get, get, get. Get it? Yeah, take your hands off. Take your hands off. Get it? Oops. Puppy, 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 puppy. Some people thrive, some people grow, others don't, and they don't last in the program. The officer that never worked the unit hear us talking to the puppies and, did you just sing to the dog? And I said, yeah, that's how I get her to come. Baby, that's my baby. Give me a baby. Hey, come on, D. What's up, come on, D? No, hi. Hey. Look at the little dog. Ah, what are you doing? Ah, he got me. Ah. They probably said, these guys is crazy. <laughs> they nuts. And I said, I'm bonding, man. I'm bonding. What, what do you mean, what I'm doing? It's going to take a while to wrap them up. Take a while to clean them up. I'm trying to show my family that I'm doing positive and that the outcome is going to be better than when I first came in prison. My name is Shannon, and this is my very first time raising a puppy. Sky is a wish I made upon a star. My life was darkening with sadness, but Sky made me smile at first sight. She's my world. She's my best friend. to see you guys manipulating the puppies with your leads. Walking heel, please. It's all love and light and peace and puppy kisses for the first couple, you know, of weeks. It then starts getting tougher in terms of commands and the work you have to do with the dog. What dog is that? Sky has been having a lot of problems. There is zero guarantee that that puppy is going to turn into a service dog. This is not very good behavior, Shannon. That dog is obnoxious this morning. Gloria, when she lights that fire, <laughs> when she gets to that boiling point, you don't want to be a, a target in her radar. <laughs> A dog that's not performing very well at all. When Gloria gets mad and that her vein goes and you start to see the vein on her neck pop, you know she's going, she's going to give it to somebody. It shows that she needs to be with men other than Shannon. How many times did Shannon work with other men in the last week? Shan, uh, Sky, whatever the hell the dog's name is. 
Twice. How many, uh, Geraldine, your name is not Edward unless you had a sex change operation that I'm not aware of. I ain't know whether to laugh, put my head down, <laughs> have her not look at me, walk away. So you guys, as I said earlier, the numbers speak for themselves. I don't know why that dog only worked with men twice in seven days. Okay, Shannon just, I will add defensively, raised his hand and said, quote, Gloria, I can't force other men to work with my puppy, unquote, right? Okay, so respond. Did you hear what he said? Okay, respond. When it, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it comes, you have to be um, more proactive with it, you know what I mean? And at the same token, it, I don't think anybody in here is going to have a problem working with your dog if you're willing to work with their dog. If you, if you have a bad attitude, if you don't um, take constructive criticism properly, that's, that's, that's okay. one of the issues. There. Also valid point. If we've got to force you to participate, you shouldn't be in puppies and bars. Okay, so you go back to All right, room. guys. Yeah, the puppies can go back to their razors. You know what I mean? When they was talking about how Sky was running around in the classroom, you know, I felt like they was out to get me, you know, like I wasn't doing what I was supposed to have done with her. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I think she was trying to um, give you a heads up to make you more proactive. Mm -hmm. but come on, man. You, you got to do this. Yeah, this is Sky. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is Sky. I you know, know, yeah. Man. You know, but I remember I fall into almost the same category too because on that list, El would have no sleepovers and work with two people. I've seen those that had 10 sleepovers and Sky had two. And I'm like, yo, this is bullcrap, man. I just want you to, um, I want to pass it on to you sometimes more more frequently. And maybe we can, you know, like we was doing outside, work with each other's dog more, man. You know me already, I ain't got no problem with that. Well, they just saying, um, you know, socializing more, which is very hard because she's very small and I don't want nothing to happen to her, you know. She might eat something off the floor or, you know, something might drop on her, his, drop on her or something. Other people is not responsible. It's really challenging. It's not the program, it's the individuals that I'm around. Allah Akbar, 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 Allah A full blown gunfight lasted for seven hours. It was a horrific experience for me. Unfortunately, uh, I brought a lot of baggage home with me that I didn't intend to bring. And I didn't really realize how severe it was until, uh, well, I really didn't want to share this story. But, uh, I, had, I had a flashback. They had changed my meds. Man, I was so depressed that day. God. You know, I was crying all day. I was depressed as hell. And my wife came home, and I remember her walking up the the walkway and she looked as pretty as she always does. You know, I got a good looking wife, man. I'm so lucky. I walked in the house behind her and that's the last thing I remember. And she said, I don't know who the hell you were. You were somebody else. And I just said, they're not taking me. And she said, you walked right by me and walked into your office and shut the door. I had a 20 gauge shotgun in there. I had about 13 guns in this house at one time. She heard that gun jack, you know, as a pump. And uh, she was screaming at me, she said, and all of a sudden it went off. 
I'm thinking somebody's after me, you know, I'm back in Afghanistan. And I'm gonna kill somebody. She heard a loud crashing. I jumped through a window. Man, I'm all cut up. Deep cut. Blood is everywhere. And when I raised up, all I saw was gun barrels all the way around my face saying, get down, mother And they ripped my shirt off of me and all this shit. And uh, what got through to me was they, one guy kept saying, Mr. Bean, we're here to help you. Mr. Bean, we're here to help you. The Taliban's not going to say Mr. Bean, and they're definitely not going to say we're here to help you. And so I came to myself, and I saw all the blood everywhere, and I thought, what the f have I done? What have I done? And I had it in me. Oh, man. Full moon. I think I look like, uh, oh, you played in The Great Gatsby. DiCaprio? Yeah, I look like Leonardo DiCaprio when I smoke. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. My nightmares are pretty heavy. Sometimes it's every night, and, uh, and sometimes it's too dangerous to sleep with her, and I sleep upstairs. We try to laugh and do things that are fun, and you know, everything kind of um, feels heavier. And it breaks my heart, it does. It breaks my heart that Stephanie has to uh, endure the, uh, the side effects of my pain. You know, she, she married a different man. And she deserves for, for me to get better. You deserve for you to get better. But they got me on this med and that med, and you know, my hopes are to get off all those meds. <laughs> and uh, that's one thing about uh, the service dog is uh, that I'm really looking forward to is that'll be my new therapy. Seal is now 10 months old. He's reached the adolescent period, and he's just been testing his limits. <laughs> the last month has been very, very, very stressful. As he gets older, they'll be considering him for a placement with a soldier graduation. I'm starting to look towards that, like, okay, we have to make sure that you're ready. Now the training really starts to kick in a notch. Uh, guys, I want to talk to you about something um, which is pretty uncomfortable. I am at my wit's end with men who join the program just so they can get their bid reduced. Some of you have succeeded in doing that, granted, but don't be, excuse me, an asshole Saturday through Thursday and then be an angel on Fridays. That's what really, really bothers me. It's, it, the game's up. So I'm removing several men from the program today. There are several other guys who are on thin ice. Lewis, absolute bullshit that for a month you didn't teach Fathra any new commands because I forgot, and I absolutely forgot, to tell you guys to advance to the next line. Don't give me that crap. You know, as you should know, that a month of teaching a dog, especially a puppy, is invaluable time. And to sit on your goddamn ass instead of teaching the dog the next goddamn line is totally, completely unacceptable. Okay? And that's, that's it, guys. Shannon, let me talk to you. There you go. 
So uh, you're out of puppies. You'll be moved, uh -huh. and we'll figure out who okay. Sky gets. That's all right. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't know, it's full of BS, you know. So. Shannon, I asked to leave the program because he wasn't putting the work in. It's a 24-7 process. I expect that you're going to love this dog. You're going to take care of this dog. You're going to train this dog better. That's my expectation. And this isn't good enough. I've changed some with the program. Certain things that, 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 that's, you know, I just don't agree with certain things. You know, it's just not, it's not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. It's how you treat me is how I'm gonna treat you. At the end of the day, I just continue to do what I need to do. Good stay, Sky. Good stay. Gloria came up to me and said, John, can I talk to you real quick? She, we just let go so-and-so. We want you to take Sky." I said, sure. So I'm like, my first dog. Gloria starts bringing down, you really need to show her the love that she needs. Keep it tight, do good by her. I'm like, I got you, Gloria, don't worry about it. That's a good stay, Sky. So, good stay. my first dog. Hey, you, you with me now, let's go, you know? My family was great. All the love in the world that you have from grandparents down. I was a little black sheep. A man got killed and I had to pay for that. I gotta pay for that now. I'm on my 13th year on a 16 to life bid. I've been working. I've been working to help myself in order to help other people when I get out. I know that I'm succeeding because they came to me like, we want you to take her, finish her. So I'm like, no problem. I got you, let's go. And that feeling is just great. It's real, it's just great. Before I joined the military, I, I was very outgoing, loved the outdoors. Uh, Eagle Scout. Uh, Eagle Scout. Driven. Driven. We actually met February 14th was our first date. And three months later, we got married. That year, he deployed that September and then came back a month later. And so I was like, we didn't even have a year of us together before he was different. I was a pilot. There was numerous rocket attacks that we were taking on while we were deployed. Just, it, it, got, it got old real quick and my body wasn't taking it well. Right after um, a rocket attack, my whole body just started shaking. And I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that I wasn't thinking normally. He came back and he didn't talk anymore. He didn't laugh. He was non-existent. I don't need that. I could just kill. I could just like try. Just I'm like afraid to go in public off. places uh, without my wife. I have a hard time being around other people. Uh, I've had a couple panic attacks while, while we've been out. It was a complete, like, 180. I, I just I was like, who are you? Then, you know, I mean, obviously it affects other things in uh, a marriage, um, especially with the medications. Like, they can make things go away. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was, you know, trying for a while. He would lay on the couch for like eight hours. I tried, you know, to explain, well, I can't just make it go away. And I'm like, yeah, sure you can. 
<laughs> you know, and it didn't. <laughs> Adam. It's fine. With my wife being there, it's kind of like a supportive mechanism for me uh, for while I am out. And that's why I think the dog is going to be very beneficial to me. So I'm like his um, dog. <laughs> I, talk, I'm like, I say it all the time. I'm like, well, I'm his service dog. All right, um. Yeah, that's a lot of tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had a lot of tail. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, good morning. Once again, my name is Damien. Yeah. Amos. Hello. Amos Tuck. So, that's it. So, <laughs> so. We bring boy. wounded Amos veterans Tuck. in and pair them with dogs. Louis Martinez, you've never participated in one of these trainings. I said, let's bring him into the fold. Let's have him see what it's like to have a dog go with a wounded soldier and up his responsibility and also his awareness of what these dogs mean to wounded soldiers. Yes. George Yes. George, snuggle. George, snuggle. You can help him by yeah, just snuggle. targeting. Just bring your hands back in. George, George, snuggle. Just watch him. That's the best move. Lewis, he blossomed. Absolutely stood, just stood up to the plate, blossomed. Our expectations have been met, and we've kind of brought him into the fold, and I think that he maybe felt like he was outside, and now he feels like he's inside. There's my baby. There's my baby. At the switch. At the switch. At the switch. Yes, good, good switch. Man. A few times, the instructors told me her command wasn't up to par, and I really, um, kind of like went off on the instructor. And I couldn't understand, like, and when I went back, I said, why did I, why did I go off on her like that? You know, it was, it was really bothering me. She likes this. She likes when I tickle her here. I want to fail. I, f I failed once and, and I can't, I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fail again. I'm going to, I got to complete this mission. I got to complete this mission for Fethra, for me. Good. And I believe at the end, when she graduates, my, my healing will be at the end. Hello. 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 These toys, there's a batch of them for everyone. They are the collective effort of dedicated fish skills and reviewers. I got your toys right here, buddy. Oh, yeah. He's trying to get these toys that way. One of these zany plush toys, one of these bones and plush hamburger toys for each of the puppies. I don't know if Jasmine was included in this. Thing. She's leaving. She's leaving. So, sorry, Jasmine. Oh, poor Jasmine. Jasmine. I know that I do get angry sometimes, but it is just because I believe that you guys are different from everybody else who's in here. I often think that if I met you when you committed your crimes, I'd probably be scared shitless of you. It's really deeply rewarding to, to be with people who have transformed. I know that this is, it's a hard season and you're gonna go home. Every single guy in here is gonna go home and get out. But when you go home, 
puppies is going to be part of you, just like you guys are part of who Nora and I are as people. And that means a lot to us. Merry, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I started in the military as a medic. I was enlisted. I dropped out of college after a year. I wanted to fly, but never really went anywhere because I was a woman. The colonel made me a promise that if I got a college degree and became a commissioned officer, he would help me get into flight school, and he did. And I flew in Desert Storm. Everyone knew who I was because I was the only female at the airport. In Wait, you knew who you were fighting. Iraq and Afghanistan was so different. You were never in a, a safe area. Ooh. Hi, guys. <laughs> Do what? Hi. Nope, this is it. Oh, hi, honey. How are you? Good, you know. I retired in 2010. I wanted no part of anybody. I didn't want to be around my kids. I couldn't connect with my husband, who's a combat veteran. It's just immense anxiety. Okay. Alex, go sit down at the table, babe. Bless us, O Lord, in these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Somewhere deep inside, you, you deal with things. You just deal with things. And that's not always really healthy. And people need to open up more, even though that's really against a lot of the nature of our, us military guys. I eventually got diagnosed with PTSD. I was so angry. I'm like, I don't have PTSD. You're nuts. Like, you, what, what medical school did you go to? You are so stupid. Look at me. I have a job. I'm, I'm happily married. I'm successful. And he was like, uh-huh. And how much is it costing you to keep that facade going? I got my Italian teacher convinced that I was. Both my parents? They have PTSD. I remember in the parking lot of Lowe's, my mom just melted down because there was a thunderstorm. She like got out of the car and was like yelling, like, we're under fire. I was like, no, no, we're not. So just like, you should get help for that. She doesn't like people in her space. She doesn't like bridges or elevators. You know, it's just things like that. Like, she will go, take, like, go around elevators to not do that. It's just, it seems normal after so many years that we just don't really know what to do or like know how to really just help any more that we can. Twelve years of war. I'm not going to get that time back with my children. I'm not going to be able to change how they've coped with my deployments, my husband's deployments. Well, we've sacrificed so much. And you can't get that back. The other day, I really was feeling it, man. I was feeling it. I was like, man, it's going to be hard when I have to just give her up. It's, it's gonna hurt, you know, it's gonna be painful. Yes. I almost started to cry when I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I gotta get fed through up, man. I said, speak. Yes. Go play, go play. 
Can we roll this safely and it won't affect the thing? Now, now, now I can understand when a parent says, my baby has left the nest because it's their baby and their best friend. I said, look at my puppy. She says, that's not a puppy, that's a grown dog. I said, nah, that's my puppy. <laughs> I said, no matter what, she'll always be my puppy. No matter how big she is, she'll be my puppy. I'm ready to go, man. I'm definitely more attached to him than I thought I would be. He's part of my regular family now. I'm starting to prepare myself mentally, but I know I'm gonna turn into a little boy when, when he leaves. Her leaving is just like, she just, she just has everything I need right now. You know, to keep, keep, to keep me going. But I have to wean off of it a little more now because we've gotten real close. More than, more than a lot of relationships that I've had in my, in my life. Oh, Farfall. Oh, Farfi, you are so cute. So all this is uh, the Army's answer to a PTSD. Part of the reason I'm here is to try to get rid of some of this crap. It's a little overwhelming. Um, I'm not really too keen on the whole prison thing. Being behind a locked door with no escape is just so terrifying to me. When I walked in, I walked into like the cage. I just completely, the anxiety was through the roof. It was horrible. I couldn't really think about anything, but oh my God, I'm not gonna have a way out. And I feel trapped and completely overwhelming. The other guys, they were wonderful to me. They were awesome. They were like, you know, what do you need? We're here for you. You know, breathe. You're okay. Um, they were they were really wonderful when I was completely falling apart. Ladies, gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all to the team training. My name is Glenn. I will be your MC for the duration of the event. We want you guys to know that we deeply appreciate your sacrifice and everything that you've done for us and for our country. We also want to congratulate you guys. And the fact that you're here is an accomplishment in and of itself. Me and uh, Gary over there spent countless hours crocheting these uh, this scarves so y'all so can be warm during this team training. We had somebody named Jojo in the program. So he kind of did these little, nice little patches that you can put on your belt for kibble because that's a big motivator for our puppies. So we're gonna hand these out to each one of you guys. All right? I feel like I'm on the Oprah show. <laughs> <laughs>
Donna Why did you name him Seal? Okay. He's sponsored by a team of Seals. Oh. Navy Seals, yeah. We won't hold that against you. You want to go to the next one? It's how to put collars on. I'll slip this right over George's head. Like this. And he's good. I can't do it if you're going to kiss me. <laughs> you're a typical Navy SEAL. Trying to get a little on the side, aren't you? Barbie said. That's it. That's it. That's it. Pepper set. Yes. Nice. Hanging out with these guys is like like being home. These guys are just like some guys I hung around with, you know, when I was growing up. So uh, it's just no difference. The only reason I'm not here because I hadn't got caught yet, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hill Sky. Sky Hill. Sky Hill. Oh, 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 oh. First and foremost, Feather barked really badly in someone. We gave her a ball to put in her mouth. Hopefully, she continues not to bark, but she, she was pretty bad. But we're saying that they're not challenging because they're bad dogs. This is a hell of a lot of upheaval. And they're testing. Are you really going to take care of me? Okay. Okay? I'm just going to show you briefly what this looks like with Seal here. I just, any, oh, 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 oh. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Good help. Yes, help. Good boy. If you get this home and practice it at home, remember not to hook it up to the 911 line while <laughs> yeah. you're practicing. One of our veterans did that. Keeps bringing his, look at him. Keeps bringing his uh, vest. He says, hell, I'm ready to go, dude. You're boring. <laughs> okay, down, seal. Yeah, good down. Yes. Yeah, you can sleep with it if it makes you feel better. I had two different dogs today, and both of them had two different personalities. This one here is a little bit, uh, I'm more like my wife, you know, hard-headed, stubborn. Uh, the other one was more like me, easy going, easy to get along with. <laughs> I better not say that. I've never spent time in a hotel with a dog, so <laughs> it's kind of new to both of us. Old seal. Yeah. George down. Oh. Yes, George. Good, George. That was a good down. George, off. The dog's trained. I'm not... Hey, welcome to Jimmy's BBQ. <laughs> what are you guys having? No, are we waiting for a friend to come? Yeah, um, uh, hey. on, yeah we're not allowed to have dogs in the in the oh, restaurant. I, I didn't here. see that. Not, he's my service dog. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a second. Over to our table, Do you think there's a dog? Oh my I God, that dog. I smell it. I smell it. Uh, oh. oh. We're not doing I'm very well at all. We smell there's a dog at that table. And, and <laughs> can I help you? What it, there's a dog under going? that table that is so unsanitary. Uh, would you happen to have credentials, like a card on you or something? Okay. As in, she assists me with my disabilities. There's a no pet policy. In Great, she's not a pet. Burrito, taco. Oh, we don't have burrito. We have tortilla. I want to taco bell. Yes. You have a dog under there? That's a figment of your imagination. A figment sir. of my imagination. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a uh, service dog. That's a service dog. A service dog. What is a service dog? Okay, now time out. We're not doing this for fun. We're doing this only because we know you're likely to encounter something like this in the future, and we want you to maintain your composure. Well, let me let me ask you a question. He, he said, "Explain to me what is a service dog." Okay. I I don't want to say I have a disability, 
or I have this wrong with me. You see what I'm saying? So. You're going out there as a service dog, you are announcing to the world that there's something different about you. Yeah. So you right. gotta get comfortable, Mark, because then it, you gotta get comfortable because you've chosen to say, I've got a disability. And then, Peg and I can go ready. We're not. Good, David. Okay, just gotta go. Can I wait? Wait. Just gotta go. We're at this table, so where would you like to sit? Yes, I may. I get a half order penne vodka. And for you, one? Can I have the penne vodka as well? Can you get a cheesesteak sub? Would you like anything on it? Mushrooms, pepperonis? Yes, please. All right. And uh, what's the L provolone or American? American. No way. Really? <laughs> Can I get provolone? Um, provolone? Sure. That's what I was thinking. That's, that's okay. what I was thinking. <laughs> you get whatever you, you want, Chris. He's a Chinook pilot. He's used to listening to a black off pilot. Oh, 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 better outside. <laughs> yeah. I just, you know, sometimes it feels like the room's closing in a little bit. Need to kind of get outside and uh, get some fresh air. But, uh... You feeling that in there a little bit? A little bit, yeah. What is it about it in there? I have no idea, man. That's what is it about it in here. It's not in there, I know. It's inside me. Hi there. You're in the hot seat. In the hot seat. Yep. Okay. My concern, Mark, in a nutshell is, if she's not used as a service dog, then it's a waste of the dog and it's a waste of money and time. We expect that in public, you're gonna use the basic commands. So if what you need is more of a companion, that doesn't know 90 commands, then that's a different route. I've gotten a lot of negative feedback, and some of it I felt like it's just threats, you know, that uh, we're not gonna send you home with a dog if you do that, or this or that, you know, and I've got some real issues. I've got, you know, some memory issues, and, and, and I'm trying, I'm trying hard. I don't think that I've been giving you n just negative feedback. I think I've been honest with you. These are issues that have got to be corrected, okay. or the result is we can't send you home with a dog. We just can't in good conscience say we're giving him a dog that is that's not being used. I understand. The dogs look so much more in sync today. How was your night, Tracy? I had Fethera. Yes, I did. Um, we practiced in the hallway, and we did have a little boy who startled us running down the hallway, coming around the corner, and she started barking. I had a hard time getting her to calm down. And, like, what kind of barking? Was it like, one bark? No, or was she it... kept going, and it stressed me out because Apparently I didn't just... feel like I had the confidence to get her under control. All right. Okay. So, Chris, we've decided to pair you with Seal. Tracy with Murphy, and Mark with Skye. We have decided that Fethra cannot be a service dog. We do not want to put any veteran in the position where the dog causes anxiety instead of relieves it. Fethra is going to be with us until tomorrow. We're going to release her as a pet. We will explain this to Lewis. He's going to be pretty crushed, but he's, it's going to be obvious when everybody walks in with those four dogs. She doesn't have the confidence to be a working dog as much as our fingers have been crossed for a while. Whoever they walk in with, that's 
Who they gonna who they gonna who they gonna be with? I would really like I thought to go with Tracy, even though I don't know if she went with Tracy, but I I think it would have. It would be awesome for her to be with uh, Tracy. Do you miss her already? You know, miss. I will always miss her. Of course, that's what I was saying. Um, <laughs> she'll always be in my heart. You know? But she's gonna go off now to um, improve the quality of life of someone else. So I'm very happy. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel very good. I'm very happy that you know this is what I raised her for. And. Um, very happy that she's going off to uh, complete her 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 duty, yeah. what she was raised to do. What she was destined to do. The world destined to do. Got away. Got back. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah, you did good. Yeah. Good way. Good way. Okay. Murphy, wait. Murphy, wait. Murphy, heal. That's it. That's it. I don't know where we go. Okay, let's go. 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 Let's go
I probably slept the best I've slept in 10 years last night. I woke up one time and I feel so much better because I'm sleeping because I had my buddy and she was awesome. She just snuggles right up next to you and it's just, it's great. It's just comforting to know that she's there. Hey, we're going to shop right. Yeah. Man's Angel, cashier. <laughs> so, what do you got for me? You can just wait. I'm going to reposition my dog. All right, sure. Why not? Seal. You know, it's a good time to have a break. Uh, seal. Heel. That's it. Yes. Yeah, what kind of dog Boy. is that? If you just wait one second, please. All right. Let's seal. Go. Got my back. Yes, that's it. I'm proud that, that I made it to this point in my life and I was able to do something positive. All right. For Chris. Sorry about Ooh, that. Right. I'm just on break right now. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it kind of reminds me of how I got to this point in my life. You committed a crime. Don't undermine your crime by saying that you're proud of an achievement that was as a result of that crime. So I, I kind of struggle with accepting that word, like, are you proud? Thank you. Yes, sir. You have a good day. Yeah. Thank you for shopping that shop right. <laughs> hey. I'm curious as to what your experience was like. Have you guys been using the skills that you've been learning from the raises you're paired with? So, please. It finally clicked why I have this dog. Mm. Because not one time I went into Target and not one time that I think, you know, where the hell am I at? What's going on? Who's back here? This dude looks like Haji. You know, oh, a little alarm went off over there, mm. and my chest start getting tight, and all that stuff. Not one time, and the reason is is because I was totally focused, focused on, her. on her. And it's like, okay, I get it now. I haven't been to Target by myself in eight years, and I went to Target last night with five items. I was like, I got five items at Target. How crazy is that? <laughs> my husband better get a big old pay raise because I'm going to be going to Target <laughs> with my dog. So thank you. You guys are really Cheers. professional. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Bittersweet, and that's the term for it, bittersweet. Worked and played in snow and rain, sweet. Bitter, it's all over. I'd like to introduce retired Commissioner Brian Fisher of the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. Most programs that we create in a prison are designed to give offenders skills. This is a program that is designed to provide assistance to outsiders, to those people who clearly deserve everything we can give them and then some. You have our respect, you have our honor, and now you have our dogs. This is a compilation of the life and times of Sky, moments. And it's been put together, token of our appreciation in Sky's journey. Right, Joy?
look at him. He thinks he gets a break. He <laughs> this was my last entry to Seal. It was a personal letter that I wrote to him and started saying, uh, Dear Seal, well, my dear friend, our journey together has finally reached its end. Being able to have shared this experience with you has been the most humbling blessing of my life. It still seems like it was yesterday when I first held you in my arms. I will forever treasure every memory that we created throughout our journey, and I shall always love you. You get to have that. Well, I appreciate it. Can I show you one thing too, Sky? High five. Yes. Good girl. High five, High five. High five. High five. High five. High five. Good girl. That's cool. I like that. This was my grandfather. He came in August mm -hmm. of 2002. And at this time, I didn't know it, but he died in December of 2002. His stomach, uh, he had problems with his stomach. Yeah. And this was his last trip as he went around to say goodbye to everybody. Oh, really? And nobody knew of it. Right? And, um,. He's been a big part of it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I understand. Yeah. He's been a big part mm -hmm. of me moving. You know how proud he would be today if he was standing here? I figure. Huh? He would, he would be, you know? He'd be grinning from ear to ear, man. Right. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. I think so. Part. Yeah. A, part of, a big part of why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. I tell I you, so. I can never, ever, ever repay you for what you've done. And I have people come up to me when I'm in uniform a lot and say, thank you for your service. I've even had people pay for my meal or try to. And uh, some of that stuff, you know, I think it's easy for somebody to come up and say, thank you for your service. But it's not so easy to really put yourself into that. And that's what you did, man. Right. I mean, I've seen more patriotism in you than I've seen a long time. <laughs> Absolutely. You're a true American, brother. Thanks. And I thank you for your sacrifice. And I don't know if I was in your shoes if I could let her go. I know that's the hardest part. Well, well, it's time to enjoy a good life, Ray. Hey, man. Yes, sir. Thanks again, brother. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you updates. All right? this relationship. She's really intuitive and knows when I'm stressed or feeling anxious. So it's a lot better. Bring it. Murphy, bring it. I was really shocked, honestly, that the dog ever did anything. Because I was like, oh, you know, it's just a dog. But it's it's not just a dog. I mean, even just being around her, it, it feels different, you know. Oh, that's a baby. He didn't have a good Where are you going? Wait, Sky. Come here. Come here. Watch me. It's a good girl. Yeah, yeah. Come here. There you go. Yeah. You know, she she reads me like a book. She can tell when I'm stressed out. She can tell when uh, when I need her the most. Uh, give me some belly. Yeah. I think the greatest experience for me was not only getting Sky, but being around those prisoners. John. When I put my arms around that guy and I told him he's a good person and he's made a difference in my life, I meant it. I know he's changed. And now I've experienced that myself. <laughs> 